a lovely evening. I really enjoyed that. Mm. Yes, so did I. Sorry you're going now. Well, of course, in some ways. It's, it's always the same, isn't it? After a gathering like this, everybody's laughing and wonderful. You think, how can I possibly live without them? We forget that under normal circumstances. It... They're all as miserable as Sip. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Well, if I'm going to be behind my desk bright and early, I'd better call it a day. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mrs. Good night. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Must be at the grindstone by 7.30, mustn't we? I think that a drink at the bar is in order, yes? Good thinking, Adam. Yes, that is good thinking. Well, one of these, Don. Yes, thank you. Hello, Mr. Ledgeford. I hope you'll be comfortable here. Yes, we usually are. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Good night. Your What's your menu? Nice visit. You? It really is good to see you. Is it? You must be joking. Of course. Don't seem to hear much from you, though. Ah, yeah, well, I've been busy. Very busy. I, uh, I bumped into Mrs. Brownlow when I first arrived. Oh? And she told me the engagement was off. Because of that ex-secretary woman, was it? You've been playing somebody else around. Is that what you think? She was on the phone when I first arrived, talking about getting a divorce. Well, it's got nothing to do with me. I wouldn't put it past you. First my mum and then Mrs. Brownlow. Elaine Winters and I had a strictly working relationship and nothing else. Matter of fact, hiring her came close to being the worst mistake I ever made. What? She's what you might call ambitious. Well, so are you. Oh, not in that way. I'm not. No way. That woman has done everything she can to put me down. And she's done it very well and all. Thanks to her, I'm being moved to another area. Where's that? Sheffield. Oh, that's not so bad. Maybe. But the demotion that goes with it isn't exactly the best news I've had this year. Demotion? Oh, sure. uh, not with that. And with messing up my relationship with Kath Brownlow. Add those two things together, I think I'm in line for the... Failure of the month award, wouldn't you say? Oh, she's just a machine, you know. Efficient, cold and unmoved. Darling, you're letting her get to you. I don't think so. Look, I don't expect you to be at Rawls and Funny at dinner. You wear a bit of a wet blanket. Sorry. I'm not complaining, darling. I'm just getting worried. <laughs> See, I asked Mrs. Freeman to give Benny a job. Anne? She wouldn't. Oh, I just feel I've failed. I feel really bad about it. Yes, but look at it from her angle. She's taken over the motel and she wants to make changes, create a new image. Maybe Benny doesn't fit into that image. That's what I'm worried about. I mean, don't you see that? Here we are. Sorry to interrupt a heart to hurt. No, 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 not at all. My wife is concerned that Mrs. Freeman didn't give Benny a job. No, I'm not. Well, of course I'm worried about Benny, but well, we all are. No, my main problem, I mean, the thing that concerns me most about Mrs. Freeman, is that she's going to stop Crossroads being about what it always used to be about and make it all about success and upward mobility. hard neck business deals. Hmm? Well, yes, exactly. I mean, that's why I'm upset about Benny, because what well, it means that, well, people like him just aren't going to get a look in anymore. Think of it as a new start, a fresh beginning. I'm going backwards. Well, think about it as going sideways. Whichever way you look at it. A demotion is a demotion. Well, that's going backwards in my language. So, start afresh from there. Look, forget what's happened in the past. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and then you can start again. Is that what's called geeing the old men up? It's called seeing the bright side. If there was one, believe me, I'd see it. All right, here's one. Coming to Sheffield's got to be good news, hasn't it? Has it? Well, back to home ground for a start. He'll be much nearer us, nearer home. I tell you who else will be pleased. Donna. Look, she will. Think about it. There she is, all on her own in that house. A house that's easily within commuting distance of Sheffield. Are you suggesting that I... You've got to live somewhere, haven't you? Well, that's my morning finished. What? It's time for lunch. Oh, good gracious, so it is. Not everyone likes to eat at their desk. Of course not. I'll see you this afternoon. Oh, I'll be taking a long lunch hour today. Any particular reason? I'm going to see Paul. It takes that long to get to the restaurant back? It's his day off. Oh, of course. 
And I'm spending every spare minute I can helping him redecorate his new cottage. The every spare minute you can, including long lunch hours. I'll make it up. I'm glad to hear it. That reminds me. I promised him I'd help him move in next week. I'd like the day off, if that's all right. Well, not necessarily. I have put in a lot of overtime lately. For which you've been paid. I have a life of my own to lead. It's not just a question of the money. It's never just a question of the money, Miranda, for those who've always had enough. My work is very important to me. I have tried to prove that to you. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. You can have your day off, but I shall expect a favour in return from you. Agreed? Agreed. Oh, incidentally, I shan't be very late this afternoon. Paul and I want to say goodbye to the hunters. Hello? Difficult job, that. Hmm? With that, I, I used to do that, cleaning down and... Yeah, it's about all I'm good at these days, so they say. Well, it's got to be done proper, otherwise the cars won't go. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a mechanic. Well, I'm trying to be. Not a local dog's body. There's a lot to be said for it. Everybody do say that. What about? Well, you know, cleaning, polishing, start at the bottom and work your way up. Oh, yeah, there's a lot to be said about that, all right. There's not much to be said about working your way down, is there? There you are, Benny. My God. They told me you turned up like the proverbial bad penny. Yeah. What's that? Well, that's just a joke, at all. Hey, we've missed you around here, mate. You've met Roy? Roy Lambert? Oh, yeah, we, we've been talking, haven't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, 19 to the dozen. Sorry I didn't meet you yesterday, but, you know, being a businessman, having so many things to do and so little time to do with it. What, are you a businessman? Well, as you notice, but i got to keep them on their toes, haven't I? I don't want to let them know which hole I'm going to come up out of next. I don't know what you're talking about sometime. <laughs> a lot of people do. Cheeky. So, how did you get on yesterday, then? The lad tells me you went for a job at the motel. Oh, there. Yes, there. So when do you start as the managing director? Oh, I didn't go for that job. I just went for a job in the gardens. Start at the bottom, working way up? <laughs> That's what I was just saying to Roy, wasn't it? <laughs> so how do you get on? Where? At the motel. Oh, weren't no good. She didn't want the likes of me, I could tell. How could you tell? Well, she didn't give me the job. Well, that explains it. I'm glad, really. She's funny. But I couldn't understand what she was saying. I mean, I couldn't work for her. I wouldn't know what she was telling me to do. I don't know the woman. Anyway, you're better off here. Yeah, that's what I said. Got him to ask Matt for a job. And? No joy. No joy. Wasn't looking for any stuff. That's what he said, Sid. Yeah, well, you'd think when they advertise for a manager they put in, only little Hitlers need apply. What's that? Well, first of all, we've had Ken Sands, then Harry Maguire, now Mac the Knife. Yeah, but it's not his fault, is it, if there ain't no work? It's not his fault that you see good in everyone, is it? Anyway, you hang on a little while, and I'll buy you a plowman's lunch and some lemonade. All right? Yeah. <laughs> could see you now. Who knows? Might set a new trend for restaurant managers. Would madam like a little flaked plaster or sandpaper and pate? You seem in a good mood. <sighs> I am in a good mood. To be away from she who must be obeyed is heaven. And on top of that, seeing you makes me happy. Oh, yes? Hmm. And this little rural haven of peace and quiet. What? I wouldn't go any further. Why not? God. The House of Ross. I like it. You could start a new trend. Everybody has wallpaper and smooth paint and carpets and furniture. All boring fools. Exactly. Leave it just the way it is. 
Before you know where you are, you'll have the colour supplement people round here doing an article on the room of the mid-80s. Well, I'll be fighting them all. Meanwhile, will you please put on that shirt and let's get down to work. Clear up this mess. Back to reality. Back to reality. Actually, I rather prefer the fantasy. Story of my life. You're not having second thoughts, are you? No, no, it's a big step. Exciting, though. Yes, but would it be as exciting in three months' time? Are we doing the right thing? Mm. Of course you are. It isn't easy. I know it isn't. Don't think I don't know what I'm talking about. I've been through it all. When I sold my business and moved to Germany and started a new life, I had all the worries and the doubts and some of the fears too. What's life without a few of those? He's right, David. I know he is. And I'll tell you something else. I've never regretted it, never. Well, good for you. And neither will you in the long run. It isn't the long run that worries me. It's a short run. The saying goodbye, the driving away. Oh. This really is very kind of you. No, it isn't. All right, then, yes, it is. But there is a strong streak of selfishness in it. Selfish? I can't tell you how I envy you. Envy me? Yes, well, keep on working while we're talking. Yes, 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 I'm so sorry. Why do you envy me? Because I should have taken my own advice and moved out of the motel like you did, that's why. The trouble with Nicola Freeman is that she thinks because I live on the premises, I'm at her beck and call at all times. Yes, I must say she's a bit like that. A bit? She's under the impression that because she lives, breathes and eats major international hotels that everybody else should too. Well, there's more to life than that, Paul. Oh, you're absolutely right, but you're getting a bit bitter. Why? Yes, I am. But not with her, with you. Thanks a lot. Well, you can slip off to your idyllic little cottage and mix yourself a mint julep, sit on the grass and listen to the birds singing, and let the hotel go hang itself. Do you know something? I wish I could. Oh, there you are. Uh, I was just wondering what time you're actually going to be leaving. Well, it's a bit of a movable feast between three and half past. Please sit down. I'll pop in and say goodbye. Right, thank you. I wouldn't want to miss you. Nicola, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can I ask you a favour? Oh, by all means. It's about Benny. He came yesterday. Oh, yes, of course, strange lad. Looking for work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, we've got nothing here for him. Yes, well, the thing is, I'm very concerned about him. Well, we all are, really. He must be quite special, the way you're all rooting for him. Not only that, although he is very special. No, I think he needs our help, and uh, we owe it to him. Well, I'll think about it. I, I can't say more than that. I don't think you'll regret it. It's good, this, isn't it? Not bad. I, I don't mean the food. I mean, it's just like the old days. You're right there. I always did prefer this bar. But what's wrong with the other one? The old one? New image, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, the powers that be, you know, they want to alter things around. Stamp their own personality on the place, all the things, you know. Refurbish in the old one now. Yes, anyway, listen. Where did you sleep last night? Thought of that. Listen, can you can't sleep rough. I mean, we've got a room back at Mavis's place. Abby's gone. You're welcome to that. What about Mrs. Hooper? What about Mrs. Hooper? She'll do as I say. Yeah, but I ain't got a job. I couldn't pay her nothing. You can pay later. I would not pay, Sid. I wouldn't do that. I know that. Okay, so you got a job. No, I haven't. Look, come round in the morning to the garage, right? There's plenty of cars to be cleaned and washed. We'll find plenty for you to do. Just a minute, Sidney. I mean, what about Mac, eh? He's not going to be doing cartwheels at you firing stuff. The Ayatollah? Just leave him to me. Come in. Ah. Knocking on my office door. Goes against the grain. That's a bit. <laughs> so to seeing that desk. Mm, don't you like it? Do you want honesty? Why not? I think it's dreadful. <laughs> oh, I've decided to see your Benny Hawkins again. Tell Barbara, will you? I shall be pleased. I dare say we'll work something out. It's going to be. Oh, no. As far as work's concerned, I'm never kind. Practical, maybe, but not kind. Seriously, David, I'd like to thank you for making everything so painless. I know people in your position who'd have dug their heels in and made it as awkward as possible. No point in that. They'd have done it all the same. 
I'm sorry our acquaintanceship has been so short. Yes, so am I, and I wish you lots of luck. Not that I think you'll need it. Don't forget, if the rumour's true, and you come back to King's Oak to settle, you look me up. Well, you will have moved on to larger and newer pastures by then. Well, I wouldn't bet on it. I may get to like the place. Well, in that case, I certainly will look you up. Darling, sorry to rush you, but um, there are one or two people that would like a quick word with you before we leave. Uh, excuse me? I can't wait to see us go. Oh. <laughs> One moment, please, ladies and gentlemen. David and Barbara. You may wonder why I have been chosen to say a few words, because nobody else would do it. <laughs> well, that is partly true. Actually, we drew lots for it. Yeah, you lost. <laughs> Everybody's stealing my best lines. You should be used to that by now. <laughs> and we are used to having you here, David and Barbara. Yeah. We're not used to saying goodbye. But the main reason I have been chosen, I think, is because I'm the only one here who is not likely to break down. Oh, dear. I can't say the same for my wife, I'm afraid. What we would all like to say is that while parting was such sweet sorrow for Romeo and Juliet, for us, I think, it's only sorrow. Now, I know that there is a lot in it that's new and sweet for you. New lands, new pastures, new horizons. Uh, something like that, yeah. So, David and Barbara, we'd like you to take with you into these new lands a little token of our appreciation, regard, and love. Miranda. Uh, well, it's not the sort of thing you want on a long trip, is it? I didn't. They'd be safe on canoes in the backs of our <laughs> Yes, well, we'll look after them until you get back. Oh, look, they'll make lovely dog stars. Uh, uh, <laughs> just take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I can't say a lot. Just say uh, goodbye and thank you for all these. Yes. Years. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye, Julie. Bye-bye. Look after yourself. Bye-bye. 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 UK Gold checks up on the residents of Albert Square in 25 minutes. Until then, it's Ramsey Street that provides the drama in Neighbours.